Hello and welcome again to Inside Earthster, our series of short monthly videos in which we share with you updates on our product and how we're embedding the best LCA science into it. During the last month, our main focus has been interactivity and making those activities that you do most often as available as possible, as easy to access. And you'll see that interactivity the moment that we open the, the cycle. You'll see that when I click on things, it navigates straight away to the different areas and I can drag the screen and, and go to a different part of the cycle. And every time that I click for a first time on something, it will focus on that and show me the most relevant information. When I click a second time, it will open the drawer. It will show me the details and let me edit things. Now, uh, one thing that you may see as well is if I go into any of the processes, it, uh, it shows a lot more available actions. You'll see all these. I can edit things, but also I can swap processes so I can improve them. Uh, we have a hierarchy of, uh, of uh, different types of data that you may want to go through. So our templates rely heavily on input-output data, and that's based on spend. And that can be that has its variability. You can't avoid it. Uh, so sometimes what you want to do is upgrade to something like Echo Invent. So if you if you want to upgrade to process based um, process based data sets, then what you can do is swap process. This will show everything in the database. Uh, but now I'm going to look for something that will substitute the truck. Uh, so lorry transport, for example, and uh, I may want the the market for it. So like the the global aggregate. So I have here the, the most general lorry transportation, and now it's asking me how many metric tons per kilometer. So I'm gonna throw in there a number for the car uh, and immediately it's done the calculation so I don't need to do anything else if I were to change that number again it will um, it will update it again uh, but another thing that I might want to do is say well okay so this is a good start but how do I know, how do I know that my supplier follows that process they probably don't their specs are probably different so then we can go here to invite supplier and it will ask me for the details of my of my supplier so that I can send them an email and say, hey, can you have a look at, at this? Can you can you improve this? Now that means that they will create their own process and they can choose if they share with me the final results or if they share with me the whole model, which tends to be a bit challenging, but some suppliers may be okay with. Uh, but definitely what you get is a model that your supplier has looked through and said, well, these numbers are are off. Let me let me put the right numbers in there. Let me put the, the specifics in there. And of course, I can invite them to to more than one process. So I can I can look here and say, well, this person is is uh, offering me transportation with different means. So they take care of all my logistics. So why don't I send them everything in there? Uh, so that's one way in which you can improve your model. And uh, and those two we've given a prominent uh, a prominent view over here. Now, if I go back, obviously it has updated, and now it says market group for transport. So the the process that I've taken. And, and it's ordered it based on the on the impact. Also, one thing that you can always do here is change the impacts and it will the diagram will reflect the changes and the, the units will reflect the changes. So you can always switch very quickly between different ways of seeing the data that, that you have in front. And uh, one final thing that I want to highlight, uh, I, I have to go to the use space for that because that's, uh, that's the data that I have is you have two types of processes. Like so far, we've been looking at the processes that are at the edge of the of your model. They're processes that you haven't modeled yourself. You haven't modeled the whole refinery. In this in this case, I haven't. Uh, I've taken the refinery that has been modeled by the the uh, UCIO, and uh, and they have done their their calculations, looked at the inputs and outputs from different industries, and built that model very reliably. And I trust that. Now, uh, sometimes I may want to create my own processes. And in other software, you would do that by creating different processes, files, if you may, be, if you may uh, and you create those independently and then call them from another one. So I would create, in this case, for example, I'll open my use space. It has what it calls gasoline consumption. Uh, I would create probably a process for gasoline consumption, and then I would create my life cycle, and in the use space, I would call that gasoline consumption. Here you can do everything from the same model. So if, you, if you're if you not planning on reusing things, then you can keep everything here and it's nicely encapsulated and uh, and you can edit very, very quickly. Uh, so that means that if I go into gasoline consumption, I get a drawer that's very, very similar. It has all the details that I had for the use phase because I can add as many processes as I want. And here we have 
petroleum refineries because that's the, the gasoline consumption uh, based on UCIO. Um, for for that, um, uh, so the, the, the consumption of actual fuel, but we've also included there the direct emissions per megajoule of that of, of burning that gasoline. So we've created a process that encapsulates the whole loop of, ga of gasoline consumption. And uh, we can also edit the information about it. So we can say how much or, or where is that consumption happening or, or more details about it. So this behaves in some ways like a process. It's a custom process. It has all the details of the process that we saw before. But in addition to that, I make the model. I can do those changes and I can create custom processes inside custom processes so the tree can be as complex as you want or you can import and export so you can say, well, I'll take this other cycle, but I'll make it my custom process. I want to edit it. I want to make it mine or I want to export. I want to export this custom process as a cycle so that uh, somebody else can be editing it independently of this or somebody else can reuse it. So that's that's the core of what we've been working on. You may have also noticed a lot of little changes because when you do user testing like we're doing, you discover a lot of little things, little glitches that you that you want to fix and you want to make the experience as seamless as possible. And uh, and, and that's the quest that we're in. Right now we're working with uh, with several LCA consultants in making sure that this tool is the most efficient way of doing an LCA and uh, uh, in a way that's as rigorous or even more rigorous than other tools that are out there. So that's been all for this month. Now for the for the next month, you can expect uh, advances on uh, advances on. Um, I can show you more parts about the uh, the way you can share your cycle with the world, as well as how can you bring data in, how can you import and export things from um, from Erster, uh, so that you connect it with uh, with other tools that you may be using. So that's uh, that's something to watch out for. As well, we are focusing very heavily on search because we realized that one of the, mo the biggest difficulties in, in LCA in general with us and with anybody is navigating the database or databases that you have. And, uh, and so because of that, we're putting a lot of, um, a lot of effort in making, making that search more intelligent, but also making that search more communicative so that you're confident when you select a process and that, and that you're guided, that if you're looking for this type of process, then it's, that's what you get. Or if you're looking for that other type of process, then the first one is not, not even there. So um, that's, that's where you can expect the biggest changes in the, in the upcoming month. As usual, I will be very happy to read your comments and, and answer. If you're watching this on YouTube, then down below. Otherwise, in our social media, and either me or, or, or any of the, the, the people from the uh, Earthster team will get back to you. And we, we want that engagement because we, we want to make this the biggest shared database of environmental information in the, in, in the world. That's what LCA needs. And because of that, we we want to involve as many of the professionals and as many of the environmental professionals as possible. So please do reach out. Uh, we'll be happy to, to have a chat or, or see your point of view. If you have suggestions, happy to listen to those. And if you if you have comments, questions or anything, we'll, be, we'll get right back to it. So thank you very much. And I'll see you latest in a month with the next update in these episodes of Inside Erster. Have an excellent day until then. Bye.